What's up, everybody? This is John from Coding Addict, and welcome to another React Nuggets video where we cover nifty and useful React topics. And in today's video, I want to show you how to set up a smooth scroll in React. So, multiple students have asked this question, so I decided to make a quick video about it. And the idea is following where you have your app, you have a few sections, you have the nav bar, you have the links, and then once you click on the links, you want to navigate smoothly to that section. And lastly, before we begin, let me just mention that you can find the GitHub repo with complete code in the description. So I left the link in the description, and it's going to lead you to a complete source code. As far as the setup, imagine the scenario, this is your app, you have the main element inside of the main, you have the nav bar, this is eventually where we'll have all our links. And then we have a bunch of sections. Normally, of course, they would be components. But in order to simplify the example, I just set them up as sections. And then in order to add some content, I set up some classes. And then in the index CSS, I added some height to all of them, as well as set some background. And effectively, in order to set up that smooth scroll, we need three things. We need to add IDs to all our elements. We need to set up links where the href is with a hashtag and then whatever value we set up for the ID. And then eventually in the CSS, we want to add this scroll behavior and set it equal to smooth. Now that is for the most basic setup. I'll also show you the vanilla JS approach if we have a bit more complex nav bar. And I guess let's start by setting up the IDs where for all the sections you want to come up with ID attribute and some kind of value. Now for the home one, since I want to scroll back all the way to the top, you want to actually place this ID where we have the main. So we're going to go here with ID. And then we're going to go with home. And like I said, for the rest of them, you want to do the same thing. So in order to speed this up, I'm just going to copy and paste. This, of course, is not going to be home, it's going to be about and we want to do the same thing for the project and for the contact. Now, I believe I didn't mention that all the way here in the bottom, I have a rest, just so we can nicely test out the scrolling to the contact. Otherwise, if there's no content, of course, we won't scroll all the way to the contact section. That's why it's here, we're actually not going to use it for the functionality. And I'm going to keep on adding my these. This is going to be for the project. And then we also have the contact one. That should do it for our app JS. And now of course, I just want to set up my links. Now I have multiple options, I can go to the nav bar, and I can hard code these links here. Or we can set it up as an array and then iterate over the array. Now setting them up as an array is better. If you have multiple places where you want to render these links. Of course, in our case, in our example is just one, but just to be consistent, why don't we do that in the data JS, set it up as an array and then export it. And as a side note, notice I have this data JS that is sitting right next to the app JS. So we simply go here with export, then const and whatever the name for the array, as you can see, we're right away exporting, then we want to set up the object. And inside of that object, we want to have three properties, one for the ID, one for the text. And as far as the text, this is what will display on a screen. So if I want to go with home, of course, I'm going to go with home. And lastly, we have that URL. So this is where we'll pass in the href. So once we click, that's where we'll navigate. And like I said, we need to go with hashtag, and then whatever is the value. So in my case, since in the app JS, I set up ID with the value of home, if I want to navigate to that particular section, of course, I need to set up my URL with the same value, just add this hashtag. Now I do need to go with proper syntax. That's why I'll add this comma here. And now of course, I just want to copy and paste. Now since it is an array between each item, I also want to keep my comma. So let me select this one object now. And we'll copy and paste, I believe three times. And first, we want to change the ID, then we want to change the text. And in this case, I'll use two cursors. And we'll go with about. So that's my second one. Then we have ID number three. And as far as the value, 
this will be project. And then lastly, we have ID four, and that will be equal to our contact. So let's delete this one contact, we save and of course, we just need to navigate back to the nav bar, then import. So we're looking for our links, we're looking for the links from and it's coming from data JS. And then inside of this div, I want to iterate over my array. And then for every item, return a HTML link element. So we go here with links, we go with map, of course, then I'll reference each item as a link in my parameter. And then I'll say return, I'm returning a HTML element, of course. And then like I said, we have the href. Now href will be equal to that URL property. So we go with link and then URL, then we also want to add a key since it is react and we have a list. So we're going to go with link ID. And then finally, inside of the link, let's display that text. So I'm going to go with link and then the text property. And once I do that on a small screen, notice how I have all my links. And what's really cool that by default, so we don't need to do anything, we just click on the link, and we navigate to that particular section. Now, of course, this is not happening smoothly. But at least the functionality works. And if you remember, the last thing that we need to do is just go to CSS, and then just add this property, scroll behavior, and set it equal to smooth. Now, in most cases, you'll add that to the root. So you'll add that to the HTML element. So now I just need to head on over to index CSS. And normally you do that somewhere at the top, since that's where you set up those rules for HTML. But just so you can see a bit better what we're doing, I'm just going to go with HTML. So that's my root. And then like I said, we're going to go with scroll behavior, and we'll set it equal to smooth. So that's all we have to do. And now check it out. Once I click on a link, I navigate to that particular section, whether that's project, whether that's contact, or about. So that's the most basic setup. But usually what you want to do is you want to set up your nav bar as sticky. And what that means is that normally it's just going to sit here at the top. But then once we start scrolling, notice how we have this fixed nav bar. And I still want to use this functionality. So I still want to navigate smoothly from the section to the section. However, there is a gotcha. Once we add this position sticky to the nav bar, we're going to be a little bit off because we need to understand that, of course, there's certain height for the nav bar as well. So now let me navigate to the bigger screen, I'll refresh, and this is our current project. We don't have the sticky position yet, and I already prepared the code for you. So I added this class of sticky, and then we go with position property. We set it equal to sticky and we set the top to be equal to zero. And effectively, this top just signals how much from the top the element is going to be sitting. So if I go to the nav bar and if I add the position sticky, so the class of sticky, and if I take a look at the big screen, I can see that the moment I start scrolling, nav bar becomes fixed here, like so. And then, of course, also it is sitting all the way on the top. So if I'll change this value in the index CSS, and if I'll say 40 pixels, you'll notice that, of course, now we have this gap between the element and the top of the document. So hopefully that is clear. And now let's take a look at the gotcha, where the moment we start scrolling, of course, it is fixed, correct? So once we press on a links now, we're hiding this text. Why? Well, because a nav bar has its own height. And since once we're scrolling, we're setting this up as position fixed. Now, of course, we are hiding the titles, the titles of the section. So effectively, we need to figure out how we can solve this issue, where we still navigate to the section smoothly. But we're not covering part of the section. And again, the whole point why is this happening? Because now we're position fixed, and nav bar has its own height. So of course, it's taken out of the normal flow. So we're still correctly navigating to the section. But since this is position fixed, and since it has its own height, it covers part of the section. 
And the way around it is setting up a simple vanilla JS code. So we need to go to the nav bar here. And now I just want to add a click handler on all my links. So I'm going to go with my function. I'm going to call this handle and then click. And that will be looking for the event. Remember, when we set up on click, we can always access the event object in React. And first thing I want to do is prevent that default because we'll add our own code. And then I want to add that on all my links. So I'm going to go with on click. So once I click on a link, I should invoke my handle click. So handle click. And you'll notice right now that you can click all day long and nothing is going to happen because we're preventing that default behavior. And then since I can access the event object here, I can look for the target. So that's going to be the link that I'm clicking on. And more specifically, I want to get that href attribute because that is going to get me the hashtag and then the ID. And we can use document query selector to get that specific element. How is that going to look like? Well, first, I want to go with my target. So I'm going to go with const target is equal to, like I said, event object. Then I'm looking for the target property. That's going to tell me which link I'm clicking on. Then I'm going to go with get attribute method, which again comes with vanilla JS. And then we're looking for that attribute. And in my case, I'm looking for href attribute. So this is going to give me that hashtag home or hashtag about or whatever link you're clicking on. And now I just want to get that element. I want to get that about section or the projects one or contact one. And here, let's start first with an element, and that will be equal to document, then query selector. And now I just want to pass in that target. And since I want all of us to be on the same page, why don't we console log the element? I'm going to navigate to the bigger screen. We'll take a look at the inspect. And then notice, once you click, now, of course, you are selecting that section. Now, that's nice. But what we're actually interested is offset top. So that is going to tell us how many pixels from the top the element is sitting. So if I go back and instead of element, I'll just say location. And then once I have selected the element, I'm going to go with dot and offset and top. So essentially, that is the property that is going to be on that element, the one that we just logged. So instead of element, which doesn't exist anymore, of course, now I'm going to go with location. So once I click here, notice home is, of course, going to be zero pixels because it is all the way at the top already. Remember app.js, that's my home. But for about, I'm going to get 272 and project 480. And hopefully you get the gist. And lastly, we want to use scroll to method that is on the window object we just scrolls to that specific position. However, we want to subtract the height of the nav bar. So the reason why we have this problem in the first place. So let me go back to my nav bar JS. I have my handle click. And instead of console logging, I'm going to go with window again, this is on the window object. And we can easily access that the method name is scroll to and in here we pass in the object. And inside of that object, we can set up the coordinates where we want to navigate. In my guess, I'm going to go with left zero. So that's the horizontal one. And as far as the vertical one, I want to go with top. And we're going to go with location. But then, like I said, I want to subtract the height of the navbar. And if I take a look at my index CSS, and more specifically navbar, I'll see that height is 64 pixels. And we simply need to subtract the height of the number from the location. So this is going to get us the location of the section. However, we want to subtract the height of the nav bar itself. So now, of course, we're going to be 64 pixels above the location of the element. So once I save and once we navigate back to the bigger screen, check it out. Now, of course, I can go to about contact project and the rest of the elements that you have. And if I ever want to go back home, I just click on home and we navigate back to the top of the page. Hopefully that is clear. We have two approaches. We have a simple approach where we just use the HTML and CSS. 
And if you have a bit more complex setup where the nav bar is sticky or fixed, then you want to reach for the vanilla JS and prevent the default, get the attribute, get the proper element, and then make sure to subtract the height of the nav bar from your location, from the offset top property. And once you do that, you'll have a smooth scroll in React.